good morning guys so we'll start with the webinar as i can see participants are in so welcome to the webinar on spring 6 with spring boot 3 myself shaitali your host for this webinar on emerging technology so let's move ahead with the webinar intro go ahead with this slide so we'll have the intro of today's event sponsor sin most distinguished learning company in it technology herel if you are moving the screen uh, i can't i can see the next slide yeah perfect perfect so i was talking about the synergetics so synergetics is india's most distinguished learning company in it technology we are ready with our top uh, top class learning solutions that can be made to fit every requirement in every sector across every industry around the globe as you can see our solutions on the screen that are onboarding solution reskilling solution certification certification plus add on cloud adoption architecting practice playbook latest technology training emerging technology training content development and more today's webinar is organized by etc community and sponsored by synergetics and microsoft uh, etc community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technologies you just need to follow our meetup group which is emerging technology community for all here you can see the uh, scanner for that you can scan it through that and you can follow our community you just need to install the meetup app for that on your phone and follow our community so you'll get the update regarding our events meetup and webinars then we have small code of conduct which you all need to follow please note that no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and you are, you cannot do the screen recording we'll share the recordings uh, on the youtube channel for this webinar so you can subscribe to our youtube channel the link will be provided to you all in the chat box later then we have agenda for this webinar as you can see on the screen go ahead today's speaker for the session is ms priyanka tande she is a trainer training consultant at synergetics and has more than 7 years of experience in delivering technical sessions go ahead then we have the ett webinar webinar on spring cloud function which is on 19th of november it will be a half a day webinar the link will be provided to you so you can register through that then we have certification webinar on ai 102 it will be a full day webinar from 10 am to 4 pm again the link will be provided to you all so you can register through that also do follow us on our social media platforms like linkedin youtube facebook twitter so we'll get the update regarding the upcoming webinars workshops and more now i like to hand over the mic to priyanka ma'am so she can go ahead with the webinar thank you to all thanks thank you chaitali morning all of you ma'am your voice is little bit slow low i guess you Is you can check uh, with your Hello. Is it Hello. clear now? Hello. No, no, not yet. Not here. Hello. 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 Yeah, it's perfect. No, yeah. Yeah. Now is it clear, right? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Thanks. Thanks, Chaitali. So let me start today's uh, webinar. um spring 6.x with spring boot 3.x so let me introduce first myself 
Uh, I'm Priyanka Tandel. As Chaitali has already given my introduction, I'm a training consultant from Synergetics. I have more than eight years of experience. I have delivered many uh, sessions, uh, the corporate as well as academics, covering from core Java to advanced Java, as well as uh, I have uh, delivered the sessions on uh, all the uh, modules of full stack development, the Java stream, covering from web basics, database connectivity, Hibernate, JPA, then front end technologies like Angular, React. So today I am happy that I got the opportunity to uh, introduce you all with this emerging emerging technology. So there, this Spring Boot three is going to release. You must be aware that if all of you have joined with the title of this webinar, then you you must be knowing that it has not yet released. It is in process. So let's have a look on all these small topics. So today's agenda is I'm going to cover Spring Framework 6.0. Some release dates we will discuss. Then we will showcase on new features and changes required for Spring 6. Then some key points to move the Spring Framework from 5.3 to 6.0. Then we will see the requirements for the first RC release of Spring Boot 3.0. Then we will focus on some features and changes required for Spring Boot 3. We will have a small demonstration also, like when we will focus on Spring Boot 3.0, we will have a sm small demonstration. We will develop one small application using Spring Boot 3.0. Although it, uh, it has not released yet, but we can use a snapshot version for now. Then we will see how to upgrade our system with the Java. 17 because that is a baseline requirement for the spring framework 6.0 and spring boot 3 then we will discuss about the changes in the uh, java x package that we are not not going to use now the java x instead of java x for this new framework with along with the jdk 17 we are going to use jakarta ee9 then we will see the changes in the observability, how Spring Boot supports observability. Then we will discuss a little about the Spring and Gravel VM and native executables. And also we will have a brief discussion on other dependency versions which are required to change as we are going to change the version of Spring. Then we will see the steps of how to upgrade our application. If suppose we are already having the applications in the older version, then what are the areas we need to uh, focus and change or migrate from particular version to particular version of something, some dependencies. Then we will have the same guidance on upgrading to the Spring Framework 6.0. So let's start our discussion first with the Spring Framework 6.0. Now all of you are must be aware that we are like uh, developing these days the web projects. Mostly Java developers use Spring Framework, and uh, for rapid development we go for the Spring Boot. Although we go for the Spring Boot, the base of the Spring Boot is the Spring Framework uh, only, right? So you might have developed, if you are coming from the Java stream, you might have developed the applications using Spring Framework 3.0 or uh, Spring Framework uh, 4.0 or 5.0. So last one was a Spring Framework 5.0 and series. Now, 
with this like this process of migrating from spring framework 5.0 to 6.0 is going on uh, since last year and it is expected to release in the end of the november maybe uh, in the next week or uh, last week of the november it has not yet released but yes some of the major version changes which uh, have high impacting features changes and upgrades uh, that will change the entire spring development ecosystem similarly spring boot 3 which is based on the spring 6 will also change a lot of things that we need, need to take care during the application development so now if suppose someone is not aware of these changes that uh, those developers may be in the trouble if they directly go and let's say using the spring uh, starter spring initializer if they go for the new version of spring boot or spring framework 6.0 they might face the issue if they don't see the changes required in detail because the spring framework 6.0 and spring boot 3 is not only just changing the version it is changing lot of many things inside the development small concepts small small concepts are there which we need to take care okay and it will be a new generation so from spring framework 6.0 you can say that uh, a new generation of spring ecosystem is going to start because it is removing many of the outdated features which were there before so it will be a major turning point of the java ecosystem of course spring boot 3 will use spring 6 only the spring framework 6.0 will appear shortly before spring boot 3 one major change which is required for spring boot 3 or uh, spring framework 6 is it is no longer giving support for jdk 8 now all of us are you know using for long time the jdk 8 but now that will become older and spring 6 and spring boot 3 will demand jdk 17 so jdk 17 will play a key role in the shift so it will require java 17 to download and you know you have to upgrade whatever you are using maybe you are using eclipse id maybe you are using intellij whatever you are using if you are planning to move to spring framework 6.0 and spring boot 3 you have to upgrade your system with java 17 okay and there are a lot of changes not only this as you will upgrade your system to java 17 for using the spring boot 3 you are you are going to upgrade your javax ee8 you are going to replace that with a jakarta ee9 okay some of the packages which we were using before are going to replace with the new packages for example this javax package is going to replace with the jakarta it provides a first class support for java modules you must be knowing after java 11 or java 14 how the concept of java module so this jakarta ee9 and jdk 17 gives a first class support for these concepts like java module native compilation as well as it bakes observability into the spring so we will see the observability in detail with the demonstration a small demonstration is there and there are many features which are going to drop as it will be declared as outdated and spring boot 3 is also going to drop out the features from the third party integration so outdated features may be some concepts just just a name it is still in process we cannot uh, guarantee but yes some of them are auto wiring setters by name and type 
some factory bin arrangement, certain wave related options, TJB and JAX WS are the third party integrations that may be removed from ja uh, Spring 6. So Spring 6 is expected to use a JPMS, Java Platform Module System, that allows developers to write the Spring applications with JPMS. Now I'm moving to the next, that is we will discuss the release date. On the right hand side of this slide, you can see there is a roadmap given for the Spring Framework 6.0, how it was started. So you can see that the process of migrating to the Spring Framework started in the last November or December 2021. Then the first release for the Spring Framework 6.0 was in the July 2022. Then, uh, there is a uh, GA six, for the 6.0 version in the October 2022 and now we are in the November and at the end of the November it is expected to release finally the spring framework. So it is a major version change that carries uh, many changes and upgrades. Similarly with the spring boot 3 with based on spring 6 have a lot of changes which we need to know. Moving ahead with the next topic, that is what are exactly the new features and changes which will be there in the spring six. So first, very important step, if you are planning to move to the spring six or spring boot three is you have to upgrade your Java version. You might be using JDK eight or you know, you, some people might be using JDK 11 you have to now switch to the, of course, uh, if you see, if you are uh, already aware of the versions of the JDK, there is a JDK 18 also, and I guess till now there is a JDK 19, uh, 20 also. But JDK 17 will be the baseline, that is minimum requirement for the Spring 6. Okay, maybe in the, next year or, or next to next year, we may switch to the other version of the JDK, but minimum requirement for using the Spring 6 or Spring Boot 3, minimum requirement for the JDK version is JDK 17. So JDK Java 17 is the latest long time supported version with all the new features introduced in the recent Java version such as records. So you must be familiar with the records if you have already switched to the JDK 14. So JDK 14 already have this concept records, then instance of changes and multi-line string. So we will see some small code snippets for this and we will see one demonstration on the records concept using the JDK 17 in the Spring Boot 3 application. Next change is it will replace the Java EE package with the Jakarta EE. So the minimum supported version for the package is Jakarta EE 9. So maybe in the next few years, there will be some more next advanced versions in the Jakarta, but it will now uh, remove the support from Java EE. So it will break the backward compatibility and this is the source of most issues. So you may face issues if suppose you are already having some Spring Boot applications where you have imported the packages from this namespace Java EE. So instead of using the Javax namespace now, Spring Boot 3 and Spring 6 is demanding to use Jakarta package. So if you are planning to migrate your application from let's say Spring 5 to Spring 6, you have to take care of all the imports. You have to take care of all the namespace changes. You have to change the Javax package with the Jakarta package. Wherever you have used the imports, in whichever files of your application, already existing application, you have to make these changes. Next, 
it gives the first class support for jpms java platform module system which will allow more strict accessibility in the application code and libraries although the full jpms support may not arrive in the initial release but it may come later so it is still in the process jpms is still in the process initial stage okay the next one is enhanced support for the native compilation a move toward the making cloud native compilation more efficient so it is in response to new frameworks such as quarkus micronauts that produce native applications with low memory usage and the fast startup times so we do not so sorry so though we can do native compilation today using spring native so if you are already uh, have developed the project in the spring native you must be knowing this so with the spring boot 3 we can seamlessly integrate the starter configuration and the specific build command easily with this native compilation support so before spring boot 3 we have to take extra steps now that process will be smoother next point is it baked the observability into the spring so already it encourages the cloud native development unlike the agent based observability now it records the metrics so we are going to use the concept of observability observability is already uh, there for uh, checking the health of the application or maybe for uh, monitoring the application you want to observe that op application so for doing that process now spring boot use one new feature uh, it has some uh, packages and classes and methods uh, by using which we can use a concept of metrics in our spring boot application for uh, using this observability this this matrix uh, feature is uh, coming from the micrometer so we need a package io dot micrometer for uh, using this concept observability in spring boot 3 so what it will do exactly observability it will uh, further tracing of through the application we can trace our application that is observability so to some providers like open zipkin and open telemetry so we will have a small very small demonstration of this concept uh, by using this io dot micrometer pa package we will try to use them and we'll try to see okay the try to trace the application the last the spring 6 will drop several outdated features and third party integrations so spring 6 will adopt more exciting features such as project loom while retaining jdk 17 as a baseline now moving to towards the key points to change spring framework 5.3 to 6.0 So suppose you are already using 5.3, any any uh, uh, version of the 5.3.x. So it is not going to immediately go out of the track. It will extend its support. So don't worry if you have developed the large application using 5.3. Point any any version of the 5.3.x. So it will give extended support. so you will slowly migrate from 5.3 to 6.0 you don't have to uh, worry that uh, now my application what will happen to my application which i already have in 5.3 it will give extended support but you have to be careful while uh, migrating your application from uh, spring framework 5.3 to uh, the next one so you must be knowing that uh, with the spring framework 5.3 we were using spring boot 2.x so this migration process we have to take very carefully it have some guidelines we have to follow those guidelines and uh, that that is a pro proper way of migrating these two things okay if you have already existing applications using this 5.3 and to uh, spring boot uh, 2.x 
we will discuss on that next the same java 17 will be the kick off of this new era of the spring migration to the jakarta ee so when uh, we will use jakarta package so you if you are familiar with some web applications you might have used javax.servlet javax.persistence now instead of using javax.servlet and javax.persistence we will use what we will use if we choose this spring framework 6.0 suppose we migrate successfully and uh, we start developing the new application or we want to change the uh, existing application and migrate the existing application with this new so we will change all the javax package with the jakarta package instead of importing from javax.servlet we will import jakarta.servlet also the tomcat and jetty versions will also uh, take to the next step instead of using tomcat 9 we will move on tomcat 10 and jetty 11 cloud native so for using cloud native there is a improved support for gravel vm concept and the project laden these are the ready-made projects which will give uh, some support to use the cloud native. And there are some other major changes. Now, if you are already familiar with the older version of Spring Framework, you must be knowing we give the configuration in XML files. Now, with this new Spring Framework 6 and Spring Boot 3, of course, Spring Framework 6, will possibly remove that it will become the past the xml configuration format will become the past and there will be some java ee apis like ejb jca dax ws will be out of date from the spring framework 6 also the rpc support will also get expired in spring framework 6 so this was about the changes which are going to happen in the Spring Framework 6. Now we are going to move out to the Spring Boot 3.0. So Spring Boot 3.0, the Spring Boot 3, or it is also called as SB3, is based on the Spring Framework 6. So it is, it is completely open the way to the cloud native and official release date of the spring boot 3 is end of this quarter that is the last week or this next week of the november so first release is already already there in the for this uh, spring boot 3 first rc for the spring boot 3.0 has been released along with the two up, uh, updates in two branches 2.7.5 and 2.6.13 so this version, this new version of the Spring Boot have 135 feature enhancements. It have documentation improvements, dependency upgrades and some bug fixes. This release also adds new content to the reference documentation to explain the concept behind AOT processing. AOT, AOT is ahead of time engine. So, with the Spring Boot 3, it is going to launch the new AOT engine. So, it will help a lot. And it is also going to add how to start generating your first gravel VM native image. In addition to this, Spring Boot 3.0 completes the migration to Jakarta EE9 and upgrades to Java version. 17. So same as the Spring Framework 6, Spring Boot also have those baseline requirements. The baseline requirements like for Java version for Spring Boot 3 are also JDK 17 and Jakarta EE 9. Some other new features of Spring Boot 3 are it will provide more flexible auto configuration for Spring Data JDBC. It will provide auto configuration for Prometheus examples, 
it will give enhance log 4j2 functionality if you have already knowing this concept of logging in java you must be knowing that for applying the concept of logging in java we use the package we use this library log 4j library okay so spring boot 3 is going to provide the support for this log 4j functionality including profile support and environment property lookup so let's have a demonstration let's see how we can create our first spring boot 3 project then are there any we will discuss on are there any prerequisite or changes required to support the new features of jdk so when i'm creating the spring boot project let's say we can use uh, our web browser uh, using the spring uh, uh, starter online we can easily get the spring boot 3 project but is that sufficient to run on our uh, existing eclipse or we have to make some changes so of course even if you download from the spring boot 3 project by creating uh, it with the help of online spring starter initializer uh, the old version if you are having eclipse with the old version of java that project will throw some errors so first you have to take care along with you are downloading the new project from the starter or maybe you are having sts tool then is uh, it is fine you have to first upgrade your eclipse with the uh, jdk 17 i'm going to show it on the eclipse also uh, when i tried so this is a very new concept right so i was not uh, having the latest version of eclipse I tried this concept uh, on my machine with the older version of Eclipse and that has not given support even after even after upgrading to the JDK 17 when I created a Spring Boot project my Eclipse was giving error for some of the features so I had to upgrade my Eclipse also so that is also required to upgrade your Eclipse so that it will support the Java 17. The older version of Eclipse are not giving support, proper support for the concepts of Java 17. So along with the upgrade of the Java 17, you have to take care. Either you uh, work on the new version of Eclipse or you add a suitable plugin on the older version of Eclipse so that it will give us support for the Java 17. Okay. Now, which version of Eclipse will support new features? So, I have uh, given one small image of uh, 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 like the latest one is this one, Eclipse 2022-09. So, I was having older one, but it was giving some, you know, errors, some compatibility issues were there. So, to properly uh, run the application, what I tried is I have switched to the newer version of Eclipse. So the, it will give the proper compatibility with the JDK 17 also and Spring Boot 3 also. Okay. So we will see one more new thing like, uh, you know, why we mostly use the Spring Boot for creating some web services. We use uh, Spring Boot REST, REST controllers. You must be familiar with the REST controllers if you are already into the Spring. So Spring Boot provides a new way of handling the exception by using a new thing that is problem detail. We will focus on that also. So how the Eclipse will support the records? Okay, we will see all these things. So this, uh, this is a link uh, where uh, we can get uh, the eclipse versions and the latest version of the eclipse we can get on this link i have downloaded you can easily go and search for the download the latest eclipse and you see on the eclipse uh, official site and get the updated version of the uh, latest version of the eclipse so what we are going to use inside that of course i'm going to uh, take that demonstration before we Go for the demonstration. What I have used uh, 
the concepts small concepts i have used in that demo let me go through that first theoretically we will see those concepts conceptually then we will apply those on in the project so we are going to use a java 17 records records concept record is the concept which is uh, initially uh, launched in the java version 14 okay java version 17 also supports the record now what is this record record does anyone know what is a record from uh, the participants uh, is anyone using the concept of record you can uh, send uh, the response in the chat is anyone using already the record okay so uh, may i know which version of the jdk you guys are using you can just uh, four or five members can reply in the chat which version of the jdk you are using currently I can see many of the members are still using JDK 8, 11, or 13. Yeah. So, yeah, I was also using 8 and 11 only before uh, this uh, concept. But yes, there is a JDK version 14 also, and uh, which had this concept of record. Now, all of us must be familiar with the classes. Class is a very basic concept of this Java which is object-oriented programming language, right? With the POJO classes. What is POJO? POJO, can anyone reply the full form of POJO in the chat? POJO. What is POJO? Hello. What is POJO? Plain object, plain object, plain old Java object, right? So we must be familiar with the uh, plain Java class where we yeah, declare the class and we have some uh, attributes, then constructors and getters and setters, right? So when we develop proper layered architecture project, we almost spend at least one day or two day on creating the entity layer or model layer or beans layer, right? Yes. So now that work, that work is uh, is done by record. You don't have to worry about uh, creating and writing all the code. So instead of developing, instead of writing the code for generating the classes, instead of the classes, you will create a record. So automatically, Java compiler will take the code of your record and it will automatically, it will not uh, be visible, but uh, internally, uh, as, as we have uh, written the name of the record and uh, as we pass the parameters, internally, uh, Java compiler will take that code as a class only. It will automatically generate uh, constructors, getters, and setters, and some uh, special methods from the object class which is a super class of all classes in java like two string method and hash code and equals method you must be knowing this method so this record concept is just a, we can say the replacement or a, a new way of writing the class it's not a lombok uh, lombok lombok is the annotation right we, yeah, we use that for generating all these things, but it is a little different concept. Okay. We will see that practically. Don't worry. Then uh, we are going to use one more new concept in the Spring Boot. That is problem details for HTTP API. Now, if you know that uh, in the projects where we develop the rest controllers 
who are creating the web services. We call these services either from the front end or maybe from, from some Swagger or Postman tools for testing. So we give the API calls. So if you are building API calls, uh, we use some HTTP status codes like status codes, code 200, 404, 302. Are you aware of the status codes of HTTP? Yes. Can you give me some examples of the status codes with the name of the that status code? Yes, Anusha. Yes, 404 is for not found. 403 is for forbidden. 200 for okay. Correct. Correct. So these codes uh, uh, we get. Suppose we are uh, integrating our front end application with the back end application, and back end is in the Spring Boot Java. Yeah. So sometimes uh, these codes are not sufficient for knowing the error. Okay. Because in the front end or uh, in the API testing tool, if there is an error, we just get the code. So that is not sufficient. So this new concept, problem details, is a new concept uh, with the Spring Framework 6 and Spring Boot 3. Uh, we can use the problem details for uh, HTTP API specification to solve this problem. And with the use of this problem detail, we will get the standard format for error response. Okay. Some uh, example is given. We will try this also. So this is a standard format of the error. When we will use the problem detail, so header will be displayed like uh, it will display content type application slash problem plus JSON. Now you know that before using this problem details, what was our content type application slash JSON. Now this is a new thing. Then we get uh, transfer info, we get the date and time, keep alive connection. This information we get in the header when we uh, get the error response when we call the API. Yeah. Then if we have used this problem details concept and how we get the format, the format uh, of our uh, body, response body, will be with the type of the error, title of the error, status code, detail, and instance. So what is this all fields are about which are displayed in the response body? The content type. Content type is the of the problem details should be application slash problem plus JSON. This will tell the client how to properly parse the error response object. Okay, so it will help the client. Although we are using this concept in the back end, this concept is going to be useful for the front end client. What is type? Type is a URI that identifies the problem type. It will automatically identify the problem type and it will specify that. Okay, it has the mechanism to identify the problem. The title will give the short human readable summary of the problem type. Status status will be, of course, the HTTP status code and the detail. The detail is a human readable explanation specific to the occurrence of the problem. And details is actually the message which we only set as a developer. We have to write some code when suppose we are giving some exception handler or global exception ha handler. We will pass some message with the error that will display as a part of this detail. Are you aware of the global exception handler? Yes, you can respond in the chat. Are you aware of the rest controller and the exception handler and global exception handler, controller advice? Yes, anyone? Hello. No one? At least you must be aware of the REST controllers. Yes. Yes. 
so have you handled the exceptions uh, over there using exception handler and global exception handler yes so we are going to use a global exception handler for our demo inside the global exception handler we are going to use this new concept that is problem details and the last field is the instance of URI that identifies the specific occurrence of the problem. Now, before I move to this, let's start with our So I'm showing you how to create a fresh Spring Boot 3 application. We have to go step by step. Now, I in my machine, I have the two versions of Eclipse. The one which was older where I tried to install every everything like a, a JDK 17 and all. Okay. So first step is to, you have to open the Eclipse. Now this one is the latest version of Eclipse. Uh, in the older version of Eclipse, uh, so I stuck at one point. I follow the steps, like upgraded my version to the 17 and all. But at one point of time, I stuck. So I switched to the new version of Eclipse that I had to do. Okay. So first step, uh, before we create the Spring Boot uh, uh, the application using online browser, we have to first... Uh, Go and get our JDK. So I'm giving the link if anyone is interested to do uh, this. They can go to this link. And uh, as per your machine, you can get the, suppose you have Windows, I have Windows. You, if you have other machine, you can get uh, downloaded the JDK. Download and install this uh, JDK. It will take some time. So I will just wait for two, three minutes if someone is trying to install the JDK. I have already clicked on this link and I got the installer by machine. And uh, by clicking on that, on that installer, has installed the JDK 17. So I can show you in my C drive uh, program files in Java. I have many versions. As per the requirement, I use the version. Now I have this uh, uh, JDK 17. Oh, so, yes. I have installed JDK 17.0.5 in my machine. You can, if you are interested, you can also download and install it. I will wait for some time so other people will install it.
am i audible hello okay so yes from uh, from searching here and there i got the solution that we have to use this jre maybe as uh, there will be the uh, uh, jdk 17 support will be in demand uh, in uh, next few months there will be some more uh, websites or something or maybe officially also they will provide jre okay so i am using this jre for my okay so what i have done once i have uh, upgraded my system with these two things now I have just downloaded and uh, you know installed this downloaded this JDK 17 and this Zulu 17 which is a JRE only for 17 version okay JRE 17.0.5 so what is required for upgrading to the version 17 is now available in my machine now I have to uh, get the latest version of Eclipse okay so again that you can search online you can uh, get let's say i have that link in the site so this one from the official site of eclipse you can see the uh, and go for the latest version of the eclipse so from this site i got the latest version of eclipse of course if you know already how to upgrade your uh, older version of eclipse by adding uh, plugins from the marketplace or updating the eclipse you can go with that option also okay now i have three things in my machine okay i have uh, downloaded jdk 17 then uh, from uh, azul site i have that zulu JRE 17 and I have upgraded my Eclipse. If you are using IntelliJ, then you have to see which version of the IntelliJ is uh, supporting the JDK and likewise you have to upgrade IntelliJ. Now there is a one more uh, new thing that is open JDK. If you see that is also a good option to try the new thing. So whatever ID you are using, you have to check for this uh, JDK 17 for supporting the Java 17 for that IDE what is the basic requirement maybe a new version of that IDE is required or maybe some plugins are required so you have to accordingly upgrade and get your environment ready now the next thing is in my uh, Eclipse I have this already created a project but let me create it a new new project by using official eclipse site of course if you have uh, this so i will just search spring initializer spring initializer project will take me to the site which is a site spring.io.quickstart So you, uh, even if you go on the spring site, you will get many, you know, uh, new, latest news which are uh, required. Like what is uh, what are the new projects given by this uh, Spring Boot 3? Like it is giving a uh, news for the native support. Okay. So you can before you actually trying this. Okay, Anusha, you are asking. Okay. Yes, Anusha, I, I had to do that. But yes, if you uh, want, Anusha, you can try by just using the JDK 17. If your Eclipse is working fine for the normal project, you just give a try. After upgrading, you create a normal project and uh, you give the path uh, in the Java build path and try if that is getting supported.
now i'm going to start with a new fresh project i had already created that for the demo but let's create it you can use uh, this online official site of uh, provided by the spring community start.spring.io or if you have scs in your eclipse or you have a separate scs tool using the spring initializer uh, screen you can start uh, creating a fresh spring boot application for this new newer version of spring you can open this site Now, the language, we will select Java only. And uh, if it's your choice, you want to go with the Gradle project or the Maven project for the project build, I'm choosing Maven. Then, here is the magic. Now, already we were using, let's say, 2.7.5. Now, I want to switch to 3.0. So, this is this version is not released officially this is a snapshot version but let's give a try let's create a small application and let's give a try now i click on this you can uh, give any suitable name for your uh, application so i have given sb3 app uh, for my previous so i'm creating the app to you can create the application with any name okay now I don't have any specific requirement, so I'm just uh, creating it with the app too. Okay. Now we need some dependencies. I'm adding the dependencies. Of course, the first dependency I need uh, Spring Web, this one, and uh, let me add uh, Spring Actuator, Spring Boot Actuator, and uh, later on, if we require any other dependencies, we can add in the form.xml file, right? So this is very basic uh, demo we are trying. I'm not doing any database connectivity and nothing. So I'm not adding some uh, extra dependencies. I'm just having the limiting my application to the web and activator only. And once I have given everything, I will hit on the generate. So it has started generating the application. It will download the application. It has downloaded the application. So I will go to that application. Here is the application. Now, this application I has to open in the Eclipse. So let me just close all this. So I have followed the same steps, and uh, like I have created the app too. I have uh, created SB3 app. Just the name of the application is different and you can open your application in your uh, spring sorry in your eclipse once you open the application check for the maven upgrade so it it may give error you have to just right click and uh, click on the maven and update the project even if it is giving error you have to check for the 
eclipse is has been set the uh, jdk version or not so see it is giving error may now because it has started upgrading or maybe it is still doing the process now let me just check okay, this error will go after some time now i'm just checking the properties by right clicking on the project or you can go from the pro uh, top menu you have to take care of this java compiler for using the concept of the uh, this records and all I was giving the error when i was not uh, changing this internal java compiler thing okay then you have to check java build path also how to go to the library and uh, this thing now i have already said but if you have not said then you have to add the uh, JDK. Okay, suppose you have already added the JDK 8 or 11. You have to change that by editing. You go to the alternate JRE. Then you go to the install JRE and you give the proper path. So this is my path to the uh, that uh, Zulu JRE 17. Okay. So yes, Anusha, you can try giving here the path of your JDK 17. And if it is working, let me know, Anusha. Okay. Then I say finish, apply, apply and close. Now what I have done for newly created project, first thing I have checked the JDK version. I have set the Java build path library and I check for the Java compiler. These two things I cross check. Okay. So yeah, here everywhere there is a 17, 17. So I said apply and yes. As I apply that, you see the error has gone. So two things you have to do. From the project property, you have to check whether you have set the JDK 17 version. And the second thing is, as we have already selected for the Maven or Gradle project, whatever, you have to update, upgrade the, update the Maven project so that it will download all the dependencies in your local repository to use. Okay. So now, before I go to this application, let's see the pom.xml. Now, if you are also trying, you just compare my pom.xml file with you, your one. So I can see that, yes, the every project details are given. And as we are using the Spring Boot project, here is our starter parent dependency. And see, all the Spring Boot uh, uh, dependencies will having will be having this 3.0.0 snapshot version as we have given this version to our Spring Boot starter parent. Okay, the next is the uh, name of the application, the first version of the application, and uh, here is a Java version. Java version is 17. Okay. Then, as I have added two dependencies, Spring Boot Starter Activator and the Spring Boot Starter Base, these two dependencies. By default, I get this Spring Boot Starter Test dependency also. Now, there is a by default uh, build uh, plugin added inside the build plugins that is Spring Boot Maven plugin because I choose the Maven project. Okay. Now, this one, this dependency, this next dependency, I have added letter because it was not giving support to my uh, records concept. When I tried to add the records concept, it was giving me error that please enable preview. So enable preview uh, is required. So this plugin I have added to successfully use the uh, concept of the records is 17 in my project. This dependency I have added, this small change is required. So I'm just giving that dependency in the chat. If you are uh, trying that, you can also up update your uh, build plugins by adding this new plugin. Okay. So we are trying this spring milestone version. And the other things are the we have got by default. 
now this was about the pom.xml file and uh, required dependencies now i am going to convert this project uh, as a spring boot uh, rest controller okay so for rest controller obviously i have the main file already here first thing i want to do is i want to test that is this project successfully running my application so before i um like this i have already created to save our time but uh, when i created this project before uh, creating these other packages i have first tried uh, this system.out.println just for checking that this application is finally okay in my eclipse with all the compatibility i have said is the all, all things okay so i just give a small message hi buddy to check whether all the you know compatibilities which i have said are okay so i'm just running the application to see that it is running smoothly so yes it is giving me in the console hi buddy so if it is giving this that means everything is set now the eclipse version is okay the jre 17 jdk 17 the spring framework 6 spring boot 3 everything is working all together nicely so i uh, got relief okay now i have created the base environment okay next i will use small small concepts okay already you if you have uh, developed the web services using the rest controller you know that we need the controller okay so before i create the controller let me create the bin model class so i have created i have not created the service layer I have just created a controller exception and the model layer. So, in the model layer, do you see my message dot Java? Now it looks as a class, but it is not a class. Okay. Here is a different symbol. It is not even the interface. If you notice, this R is here. So, let me just open. There is not a single line of code. I have just created is like by right clicking model you can of course type it new and there is a new thing added to my eclipse record okay so record suppose i want to create a record for customer <clears throat> customer like you want to create the customer class pojo class now i will create the customer record that's it if i want let's say uh, customer id in so that thing, the attributes, I will give as a parameter of this record. Okay. String, cus name, then uh, let's say customer address or something we can have. Customer details. Okay, I'm not having many uh, things. Just for demonstration. Now this is it. You don't have to write constructor and all. Automatically the compiler, when suppose this uh, record is in use, how we will use this record? That's another question. So you don't have to think about that customer is a record. You can treat the customer as a normal class. What we do with the normal classes? We create the object, right? How we create, how we deal with the model classes in other layers, maybe in the controller layer, exception layer, or the service layer, or the DAO layer, wherever we require the model class, we create the object. The same way we will do. Okay. Now, like this, I have shown you how to create this customer record. I have already created the my message. Okay. Why I have created this? Because I have created one small method in my controller that method is returning the object of the my message of course i can return the string also but i want to return it in the form of the object of the my message just i wanted to try the concept of the record okay now i am moving slowly I, have you understood this how to create the record yes everyone we have not yet seen how to use it but at least have you understood how to create the record? Yes. You can also try 
by creating a new layer and inside that new layer you can create any random employee record or a customer record you can try creating the record have you understood how to create the record you can reply in the chat hello so yeah darshan anusha and some unknown users are there anyways so after creating this record i want to use this record as to send back the response from one of the method in the controller so i'm moving to the controller in the controller i have created two controllers but first i will go to the message controller now this is a normal class which i have uh, later converted uh, to the controller by giving this add rate rest controller annotation okay by writing this annotation now this class will become the controller class and see i can uh, of course instead of creating the record in the other package i can i could create it in the same file also so you can either create it here but uh, the standard way of creating the classes is by you know creating the model layer so i followed the same and created the record inside the model layer but you can create a class like my record here also okay now this one is a method a single method i have written inside this welcome message welcome message is the method name and uh, this method is public and i have the return type as a my message now you know that my message is coming from where see form dot example dot uh, dot my model dot my message my message is a record okay and this method this is a service method this is going to take the path variable which is coming from the gate mapping request and i have specified the path slash msg slash and this name Okay, this name will come here, and I'm checking that if uh, so here is a comment that I can return the string also, but uh, instead of returning string, I am returning the object of the new my message. But before that, I'm checking if the name is blank or if the names caret zero. That means the first character of the name is digit. if it is a blank or the first character is digit then i am throwing the exception throw new illegal argument exception and some message i am passing is name invalid okay and instead of returning string as i have chosen this my message record i am returning return new my message do you see this is it is same like uh, we are creating the object of the class and some and you know that in the my message uh, what is the parameter type msg so what i am doing msg is a, a string i am just creating one string by concatenating some message with this name and that will return okay now let's try this then we will see how this exception is handled i have not written the code of exception handling here for handling this exception i have created a separate layer that is exception layer okay now let me first already it is running let me first check this url is working and giving this message or not so i am using the postman postman is a api testing tool for that so i have the i have set the port number 8090 where to, where do where do we set the port number we set the port number in which file anyone you can message in the chat which file i will use to set the port number for this application if suppose i don't want to use the default port yes application dot properties file where that file i will find in which folder you can reply in the chat resources folder so by default in the resources folder for specifying the configuration details we have this application dot properties file 
so i'm just opening that file ignore this letter contain this c is for the observability demo i have set server dot port 8090 now this 8090 i will use with the local host because this is uh, my local machine i don't have any specified server and if suppose i want to call this method in my postman i will write after that this url slash message and i will pass some name so how i will create that in the postman http colon double slash local host 8090 the port number which was there in the application or properties which i have set then msg and i am sending the name okay name is going as a uh, variable okay and as i hit on the send i am getting this reply do you see the message is coming not as a string it is coming as a object how i understand this is an object you know if you know a little bit about the json object json object is given inside the curly bracket correct yes now suppose this this is matching with this what are we are returning here hello priya welcome to spring boot 3.0 so this message we are getting and see the message property msg is a property of whom it is a property of this na no? suppose i just change this uh, property msg property just to cross check is it really giving the you know is it really having the relation with this i'm just uh, changing it to the msg message text okay message text i have changed that variable name just a variable name i have changed in the record type and again i am sending this so it is not auto refreshing why what i have to do if i want my project should uh, do the auto refreshing any idea which dependency i should use if in the spring boot if i want live refresh of my application dev tools right So dev tools dependency I have to use, but uh, I have just created and uh, taken a new Eclipse, but I have not added STS here. If I have added STS here, then it will be easy for me, right? Just uh, I would have got the dependency just by right uh, click clicking. If I add the STS, how to add the STS? I have to go to the Eclipse Marketplace. Of course, I can take the dependency directly from the Google. central maven repository but let's make a provision for future so i'm searching for sts so that the spring tool suit will be available in my eclipse so there are these versions this one is the latest one no spring tool 4 so i'm installing this it may take time so it will take time to upgrade the this with the sts uh, what we guys can do we can take a short break so that break it will uh, upgrade and i have to restart it also so let's take a 15 minute short break will that do yes after returning from the break we will see how can we apply the exception global exception handler to this uh, how we will handle that uh, this exception this exception using the problem details concept and the global exception handler and after that uh, we will see small demo on the observability also so for now uh, for 15 minutes let's, let's take a break
Hello. Okay. So yes, version. Now, uh, like uh, I have added the plugin. You have seen that I have added the plugin STS in my uh, Eclipse. So what I got after adding the STS plugin, I had it asked me to restart my Eclipse. I restarted, and now the new option. When I right click on my project, I see the new option here. The Spring option was not there before adding that STS plugin. So I have added that plugin to my Eclipse. So I get this option. Now this option is very useful. I don't have to go here and there for adding the dependency. If suppose I want to add the dev tools dependency, I have the option to go internet, go to the Maven plugin and take the dependency and uh, copy paste and uh, update my pom.xml file. The other way I have is I have installed this uh, plugin in my Eclipse. So creating on add starters, add dev tools is also there, but let me show you add starters. So it will show me the screen where it is giving me the option. It is same like that online browser screen start. It is uh, start dot spring dot I only. Now here I can search. Dev tools. Actually, that that option is there only. Spring Dev tools. That is developer tools. So this dependency I want. I click on this and uh, click on the next. Now, what it is asking me start zip. I selected the pom dot xml file and finish. Now let me open the pom.xml file. It has started upgrading this also. Yes, there was a big okay, actuator which I had already wave, stress, a starter. Now this one is a new thing. This dependency got added uh, just by adding that from the STS tool. Okay. Now Again, what I will do as I have added this. So before adding this, what was our uh, agenda? Now I can see there is a red symbol. Why we get this red symbol in between when everything was correct? So this red symbol we get sometimes because some dependencies are missing or changed. So the shortcut to remove all that we have to update the Maven so we, it will address whatever is missing over there. That repository will get added. Seeing all this. download sources and update the project. I'm going in the Maven option. It project. Update I'm doing. is not going let me just check cause of this starter dependency something is happening It somewhere so a lighter on if I need can add that. 
Till it uh, gives the problem, I will try to comment the dev tools also, maybe because of that it is giving me trouble. Maybe the new version of Eclipse is also you have to check in the settings. Some control space may not work initially. You have to check all the things. Just removing and trying that again. is doing something I have to wait so up to it is doing something let me go again to the PPT let's cover some other topics and then again we will come to the demonstration save our time So yes, we have we are now inside the Spring Boot project. There are some changes. So this SB3, SB3 Spring Boot 3 will also have the out of the box support for the native Java compilation from Gravel VM. There is a big change that some features are going to uh, declared as deprecated, which will be removed from Spring Boot 3. For example, uh, in Spring Boot 2.4, the configuration properties, we have to use uh, this. Suppose you want to use Spring Boot 4, then you have to use this configuration property. Spring.config.use legacy processing is equal to 2. This one. So this property will not be uh, having the support uh, from Spring Boot 3. Okay. Now, uh, these all things we have already men, uh, implemented, but there are few new things provided by Java 17. So this uh, record concept, Java records, which was the concept of the Java 14, were intended to be used as a quick way to create the carrier classes. So it actually create the carrier class and this classes whose objective is to simply contain the data. Okay. So it can carry the data between the modules. That is the same like the POJO classes or DTO classes. You can create the class like the uh, uh, record using this syntax, public record, customer, string, name, string, address. Already we have created this. Now the record is a new feature provided by this and it is supported. Uh, actually, it is provided by JDK 14, but it is supported in the JDK 17 also. The another new feature is the text blocks. So we can, uh, if you remember uh, in the Java, if you want to assign the lengthy text to the variable, string variable, you have to apply the plus symbol. That is a concatenation. Now that is not required because you can have the lengthy multi-line text in the uh, Java 17 by using this quotes. Okay, this is again the new feature of the JDK 17 that is text blocks you can create we can assign the lengthy text to the string variable using this text block concept next new feature of the 
the uh, Java 17 is a switch expression. Now you already uh, must be familiar of how to write the switch case in the Java. So Java 12 uh, introduced this switch expression. Now Java 17 is also using the concept of some concepts are okay from Java 14, some concepts are okay. Like the features which were introduced in the previous version are supported. Now which are supported by JDK that is given. So Java 12 only have this switch expression. So it is like an all expression that evaluate a single value. So now instead of writing the switch as a block, you know, switch case we write as a block, na? switch keyword, then uh, parameter, then curly bracket opening, curly bracket closing, and inside that we have to write uh, cases. So instead of writing the switch as a block, you are going to write a switch as a expression now. And instead of writing the nested if else, you can use this switch case construct. So as you say, this is an expression, that means you can assign that, okay? So you see here, the uh, day of the uh, day of week is uh, class available here, day, day of week dot Friday. Suppose this Friday value is assigned to this variable day. Hmm. This is now passed here as a expression. So you want to check if is a case is Monday, Friday or Sunday, then it should return six. If it is Tuesday, it should return seven. If it is Thursday or Friday, uh, Saturday, it should return eight. So you want uh, the cases to return something and that return is a uh, return value, returning value is a number. So that you can assign to the int variable. Do you see this is an uh, expression? Int some uh, variable to store the result is equal to switch. Now, switch you can uh, find it a little similar like the uh, lambda, but yeah, lambda ex operator is used here. Switch day and the block and the cases. Now, one more difference is there for the cases. There is no colon. Instead of colon, generally we write uh, the traditional switch case using case then whatever uh, the text or uh, something is there, uh, number is there, colon, and then we write the Java code only inside the case. Now here we are not writing multiple lines, rather uh, we are uh, writing this switch expression to return, every case will return something which is of the type int. So uh, besides the arrow operator, you will directly have that value. So this is uh, again the new thing which was provided in the JD Java version 12 and now supported by the JDK 17 also, the switch expression. Okay. Uh, then the next uh, change is pattern matching. Pattern matching is uh, uh, found in my, uh, like, any other languages also in Java language instance of directly in. So if OBJ is instance of string S, then they are printing the uh, string in the lower case. So for uh, checking whether the object is a string, you can use this instance of. Okay, now you can combine this instance of concept. Now this instance of is a new thing. Okay, here. Okay, already Java had the instance of uh, operator, but now they are using that as a pattern matching. And here is an example how they have used it we, along with the uh, this uh, switch. So this is a function uh, I can see which is returning the double value. Okay, and this function is passing some object. Now that object is writ like a pass in the switch and this switch is again the expression. It is not a block. You see it is returning something. Whatever is written by these cases, that will be written as a return value of this function. Okay, so the cases are there and uh, directly uh, it is checking uh, like instance of operator is working O. If it is integer i, then it will return i dot double value. If it is float, then f dot float. If it is string, it will uh, take a double dot. E even if it is string, it is parsing it into, it into the double by using this double wrapper class 
okay pass double and it is uh, returning the double value okay and by default it will return the double value zero since d is for double right and zero so here again the switch is used as an expression and again along with the switch they are using instance of now you see they have not return instance of automatically it will go suppose this object is integer it will go it in the this case if it is float it will go here if it is string it will go here if it is not of any of this case it will go in the default and everywhere we are having something written and we are returning the value in the double only why we are returning the value in the double even if it is integer float and string because we want to return the, the value from this function which have the return type double so this way you can use a switch uh, for writing any you know logic Then one more concept is there. Now, if you are uh, already familiar with the interfaces and abstract classes, so you must be knowing abstract abstract classes are made for what we cannot create the object of the abstract class, right? We can uh, only uh, like uh, other child classes can extend the abstract class and uh, override the the method of the abstract class, or maybe the child class can uh, use the non abstract methods of this uh, super abstract class now there is this new addition to the abstract class sealed classes this sealed keyword you can notice here public abstract sealed so sealed classes means what the class pet is a super class and this is a abstract class but it will only allow it will have the permits keyword dog and cat class only to be the sub classes so it will give the security also right so you know that any abstract class can be uh, extended by any other class so we don't want to give that abstract class as a super class to any class we want to give that abstract class to be to become the super class of only particular classes okay so if you want to build that restriction you can use the word uh, use this sealed keyword and permits and you can specify the class names okay understood this a new concept yes hello so this uh, this is again the new concept uh, you can explore these all concepts so this these are the small small changes in the java programming as we move to the java 17 now jakarta so already we have uh, discuss about that java ee package is going to replace with the jakarta ee 9 package so that means wherever in the project we have used the javax namespace now you must be uh, knowing that this javax is uh, Used for so many, you know, projects for the packages JavaX dot persistence JavaX dot servlet. So all the JavaX things are going to replace by the namespace name Jakarta. Okay, that means if you have suppose already created a project, let's say using HTTP servlet request. So before you, what you were having the import statement import JavaX dot servlet dot HTTP HTTP servlet request. now this won't work if you are uh, having the spring boot 3 project uh, what you have to do you have to change it with the import jakarta dot servlet dot http http servlet request also you should be also aware that when we use external libraries which depend on the jakarta suppose you now change your project wherever you want to import these things which were before imported from javax you will import it from jakarta okay this namespace is changed with the jakarta so you have to again check with the other things also for the version like hibernate validator you should use only the minimum version 7 or above tomcat 9 will not give, give like uh, supported by this you have to use a tomcat at least version 10 or above when you are moving to the this jakarta so jakarta is not giving support for the minimum than the hibernate uh, valid
when you will change the namespace to the jakarta and if suppose your project is using this thing tomcat jetty hibernate validator you have to upgrade these things also okay now observability is there but i will come to the observability later let's go and check this why it is not going yeah someone was asking me to check why it is giving this so it is asking me to change the feature to the java 18 enable preview but as i shift to the 18 it is giving me error so i cannot do that also again there is a problem i cannot run even i have to edit uh, sorry maven upgrade update the project and maybe by adding that uh, dev tool, there is again some uh, compatibility issues are there. So what I'm doing is I'm again coming back to uh, the normal by adding this dependency. So if it is asking me to go for the version 18, then again I have to, you know, uh, download the 18 and there are a lot of many, lot many things are there. Even if you try this project for the first time, you will get this error. Preview feature enable in the invalid release 17. And preview can be enabled only at the source level 18. This preview feature, I had uh, added this uh, for uh, enabling the preview feature, but uh, why it has not working now? Again, I have to check the compilers and all. So here I can see that enable preview features for 18 is there. Okay. But I cannot switch to the 18 directly. I have to go stepwise, right? Even if I change this, I have not yet uh, upgraded uh, to the 18. So, what I can do? I can do one thing. Just try restarting the Eclipse again. And I have the other Eclipse also, but that was also having the same issue. Now, this Eclipse is uh, 2022. Before adding STS4, it was working fine. Now it has again uh, raised the requirement for this review enable. Otherwise, the project was working.
I'm just trying to do some settings if it is going well and good. Guys, I will move forward. Java compiler and the JVM both should be of the same name, same version. Even if I click on this, it is not allowing me to. This one is disabled. yeah finally the error is gone so yes when you are first time switching to this and using the jdk concepts you may face this trouble enable preview okay so you have to go to the property java compiler and do the things now uh, again, I'm checking by running if everything is smooth. If it is giving high body, then yes. Now I'm having relief. Now I'm going to open the postman. What we were checking in the postman before, we wanted to check if I change that uh, my uh, sorry MSG to MSG text inside the model, my message, I change this variable. As I change this variable, I notice that my postman is giving this reply. Now, this is a coming as a JSON object. Okay. That means this record is only coming, uh, getting converted into the my message class object, and that object is uh, sent back as an response. Is this much clear? What I have done uh, in this, I have created a record. And I'm calling uh, this controller, message controllers, this method by calling this URL. Okay. Now, in this me uh, method, I have thrown the new illegal argument exception and I want to handle this. When I'm uh, throwing this exception, when it is blank or digit. So I am not handling it here. I have the separate layer. Now I'm moving to the exception handling concept with the new things. Okay, global exception handler. So I have created just a normal class, which I want to use here as a global exception handler. So for using the global exception handler, you have to take this at the rate controller advice annotation. Okay, which is uh, coming from this uh, package org dot spring framework wave dot bind dot annotation. Now. Inside this class, I can write many methods. Now I have written only one method. Uh, the method name can be anything. Okay. And uh, first, let me just show you the above one. Then I will explain the below one. So above one is the uh, same thing. It is doing the same thing which uh, below one is doing. Okay. So in this method, if you observe, this is a method. Uh, return type is a problem detail. Now, problem detail is not a user defined class or something. This is a method. This method will get populated whenever in the application there will be illegal argument exception thrown. So, this problem detail, if you notice the line number 5, import line, it is coming from where? org.springframework.http. Now, the new Spring Framework 6 is giving us this problem detail. Already we have discussed. It is uh, representing the problem detail. So it will give what? What will be the benefit of using this? So with uh, this, we will get a problem. If suppose error is thrown, so error, error will be uh, in a different format pattern. Okay. 
so now i'm i have decided that i will use this new feature of the spring boot that is the return type of my exception handling method will be problem detail i have to annotate this method as a exception handler then only it will get automatically populated automatically called so this method i have declared as the exception handler method and one more thing i have done is i have set the response status bad request http status bad request and on the call of illegal argument exception it will return something now this is what i have done the coding written of course i can return some normal thing also but now we are we have decided we will go with the problem detail so problem detail is a class dot i am calling this method this method is for status and details and the details i am specifying by passing two parameters first i am passing http status code value of 404 comma and the message the name is invalid okay now this is a new thing okay i have applied the problem detail now i want to try this from the postman uh, when the illegal argument exception will thrown when this name is a space i'm sending a space instead of giving name okay it is allowing the space let me send a number yes now do you see instead of giving the proper message when i have given the number why it is giving this because in my controller i have written the if if the character is digit then throw this once it has thrown that as uh, we are handling it here with the exception handler it has come here and from here it can display me the appropriate message see the error error uh, type about blank it has automatically detected uh, not found and the detail name is invalid and this is the instance okay it has given this as an instance okay msg12 it has returned that thing here this is a not found error if i am not passing anything it is giving not found and when i am passing any number it is giving so if i want to call the illegal argument on the space i should actually give space here right so after giving the space maybe it will throw exception for the space also not it is not throwing because i have removed that save uh, tool so i have to stop and run again now i'm trying with the space still it is checking maybe some problem is there it is not able to identify but anyways it is throwing that and we have understood that yes it is throwing the exception and this exception is handled in this exception layer global by global exception handler and it is going here and it is returning this the name is invalid okay so what we have understood the new thing is the use of this problem detail problem detail is a new concept clear now i'm going to add some more things in along with the problem details now this method i'm just commenting and below one now the first line is you can see exception handler and it will handle the exception whenever the illegal argument exception is thrown above i have not specified any uh, particular exception so it will take any exception okay now he, he this method will take only which exception illegal argument exception dot class i have specified now response status the same as i have written above http status bad request and now this one this method is also having the return type problem detail the same as above now the only difference is instead of having illegal argument exception as a parameter now i am using http servlet request why i am using this because i want to show you the application of the jakarta that's it the only purpose is i want to show you that now this request i am handling it here illegal argument exception but it is going whatever the request is coming that request is now not in, uh, uh, 
coming from Javax package, it is coming from Jakarta package. Jakarta EE9. This is a chain. Now this request when coming, from this request, we are getting the attribute names and we are uh, applying as iterator for each remaining attribute. We are printing the attribute name in the console. So here you will see the uh, attribute names when we will run it again. And the final return statement is here. So the, there are two statements in this. Here we are just using this uh, uh, for printing the attribute. Okay, just I wanted to show you this application of Jakarta. That's why I have taken this. And the final is the same as above. If you see, it is returning the problem detail dot for status and detail and it is returning the same, the same line as uh, we had above. Just the added, added thing is this, we are printing the attribute names from the request okay, in the console. Okay, okay, just to show you the application of the Jakarta. Now I'm stopping and running again. Now, if you see the console, you will see the find the console is printing something. Now, console will not print uh, anything. When the exception will get called, uh, then only the it will print something. So, I'm going to the this. And now, purposely, I'm sending some uh, number so that it should throw the exception and it should come here and it should print the attribute. Now, notice the console also. When I send, do you see this attribute? name attribute name attribute name error is also coming this problem detail is showing this this is an output of this line okay you can just observe the header uh, uh, sorry ah. draw and preview the other formats also and the pretty format also and the result of this HTTP request which is printing the attribute names one by one from the request are this. So all are the attribute printed. So that is the use of the Jakarta package. So we have seen two things now. The use of the problem detail and the use of this Jakarta package from the Java Jakarta EE9. I hope this is clear. Uh, which custom fields you are asking uh, like problem detail problem detail is a predefined we can pass the custom message of course this one is a custom message and here we are defining the status so what you want to display you can pass here if you see this method for status and detail. This method is uh, the problem detail method. We can pass the status code and the detail. Okay, what we want to display here, this properties. Let me just check. So for the problem detail, only these three methods are available where you can just uh, send a response by just setting the status or uh, status can be set set either by using enum or the second method which is sending the status by using the status code and the third method is uh, using enum and the detail only three methods are uh, available for now okay so what you are asking is i guess not possible for now but maybe in future there may, um, can be the enhancement so generally, uh, this problem statement is mainly made for this now. So this status and this detail you are setting by calling this method. Other things are by default are there. Okay. So this was about the new way of handling the exception using problem detail and uh, how we have applied the Jakarta EE9. Okay. Now. I'm going for one more new concept here. Okay. First, let's see that concept in the uh, slide and then we'll come. So next concept is the observability. Observability, uh, observability means you are tracing, you want to trace your application. So already before the spring six, in the spring version uh, 5.3, you were using the concept of the 
tracing by using the spring cloud slave this spring cloud slave was a project which provides the spring boot auto configuration for distributed tracing in the spring 5 application the spring observability is a new project see before the version spring 6 there was the version spring 5 which was using spring cloud slave this project this is the name of the project for tracing the application but after the version 6 there is a new project with the name spring observability okay so we can do the similar kind of thing which the spring cloud slave was doing so with the spring 6 there was an obs observability initiative ended with the new micrometer this micrometer is uh, io dot micrometer we have to use a package and from there we can use this concept of observability in our project okay so former former means uh, the previous uh, uh, version of spring was using spring cloud slave now we are uh, as uh, we are moving to the spring 6 we are migrating our project to use so if you are already using spring cloud slave for tracing your application in the previous version of spring and you want to migrate your application to spring 6 you have to migrate uh, your tracing activity uh, by using micrometer tracing okay micrometer we have to use for the observe uh, applying the observability so what it will do so we can record it can it records the matrix with the micrometer so by using the micrometer uh, you can view the matrix of your application which offers tracing through the providers such as open zipkin or uh, open telemetry so it is not like the agent based observability spring observability project will work in natively compiled spring application so it is giving effectively better information let me come to the again now for applying the concept of observability, what I have done, three, uh, two things I have done. First thing, I don't want it to mix the code, so I have created a separate controller, my controller. Now in this my controller, I have implemented that concept. I have taken one method. This is a my controller. My controller is same as a normal controller. I have annotated with the at the rate rest uh, controller request mapping. Also, I have used uh, I have given the path URL for reaching to this controller slash app. Now, one more uh, new thing I have given uh, done here, like for the message for this method. First, we will see this method. Then we will see this line number 17 and 20. For this method, the gate mapping is normal thing by message by message i have given just as a url path and name so whatever the name is coming here it will take it as a path variable again this will also throw the exception you see if it is blank or if it is a digit it will throw an illegal argument exception with the message name invalid otherwise if everything is okay then it is returning observation now this observation if you see it is coming from the interface observation is an interface from which package io dot micrometer dot observation package so from this package we are using this interface it is an act of tracing tracing means what you are viewing or noticing the fact or the occurrence of some scientific you are tracing something you are you want to observe something so uh, you are setting this observation so which method now you can go deep into the this concept i have just taken just overview concept so you are creating something create not started that means you are giving the command create it but does not start it so it will create it and when you will call it then only it will start you are creating my message dot name this dot registry now this dot registry is what this dot registry is a object we have declared here registry object now come to the line number 70 
this object is final and this object is coming from observation registry now this observation registry is again the interface coming from io.micrometer.observation package okay so this registry is responsible for managing the state of the observation state of the observation means whatever are the parameters states of the observation for the application those all will be stored inside this registry and we can see the parameters from this registry okay now this if i just declare this it is giving me error it is asking me to initialize something so what i have done i have written this control uh, constructor see my controller my controller this is just a constructor i use uh, this constructor to initialize this registry so this dot registry is equal to reg so i'm just passing the observation registry reference variable and i'm giving initializing the value of this, this registry now here create not started will like in this registry it will put this my message dot name but it will have other properties also not only this huh? this is what i am trying to put this state, this state inside the registry and the next is the observe method so observe method will observe it have this lambda function it will create the object of the new my message again we are using record here and this message will be written by by the name see you in the next season okay so now how to use this simply i have to call this and i don't have to make mistake i make the mistake then obviously it will not reach to the return statement it will go somewhere else so how to use this for using this i have to run this okay simply what i have used three four things i as i said i have declared the uh, reference variable of the observation registry then uh, using the constructor i have initialized that registry and then in the return statement instead of returning this otherwise i would have returned new message only right instead of returning the new message object i am uh, calling the observation dot create not started i'm adding one state in the registry and then i'm calling the observe method and it will return that okay now i'm running this saving this and uh, let me run the application and we will call this uh, method by calling it from the postman only hi buddy is coming that means at least the main method is running successful now i am giving a call to this method from my postman so here is a call so i am giving the call app is what app app dot then uh, i'm going to let me just i'm going here by message and i'm passing some name hina and i'm sending so it is giving me bye bye hina see you next season so it is giving this message only right as a response but it is not a normally not coming normally this is i have given the normal call now i want to observe what i can do i can observe this application see 8090 slash activator here i am using the to check the health of my application we can use the activator endpoints right so i am using metrics and as i hit the send button i am getting this so do you notice this is giving so many states names is equal to and uh, this name my message dot name is also added here along with the other properties in the registry i have added this also my message dot name is active okay so this is just we are these are the metrics which we can check and if i am giving my message it is not giving anything because i have not yet uh, 
added any value for that. So this is how using this, uh, I can uh, check the health of the application. I can observe the parameters, okay, by using this matrix, okay. This matrix is giving this all state of the matrix because I have used this observation and I'm observing. Observation will be like returning the output in terms of matrix. Is the concept clear? Yes. Now this is at a very beginner level. Okay, you can explore more and go deep dive, deep dive and or if you want a special session on the observation, you can ask after uh, this webinar will launch in the YouTube. You can ask for uh, the separate session on uh, observation. So I will make a, uh, like I will request for the and uh, launch the another webinar only on the concept of observation. Okay, so is it clear? You can reply in the chat. It is a small uh, demonstration of how to use the observation yes and which packages we are using for the observation observability so here io dot micrometer dot observation packages now i am again coming to the my slide so along with the observability there are some other things also added in the Spring Boot 3. Spring and the Gravel VM and the native executable. The Spring team uh, has been working on helping uh, to mature. So Spring team along with the Gravel VM team. So these are two teams. Huh? The Spring community and the Gravel VM community. They both are working to uh, prepare the mature uh, native Java ecosystem. So this both teams are adding something new to, you know, help the Java ecosystem build properly. So these two teams, Spring team and the Gravel VM team, together makes the native Java ecosystem more sustainable and maintainable. So these both teams are actually maintaining the Java ecosystem and they have the deep collaboration on the native configuration project. So building the native executables and deploying them on the gravel VM get the higher priority. So the spring native initiative is moving to the spring proper. So for AOT generation ahead of time engine, there is no need to include the separate plugin. We can just go with the spring boot Maven plugin. So it will give you a AOT. So you don't have to take any extra steps if you want to add AOT engine. Okay, just it will bring in your application. Some other dependency requirements when you move to the Spring Framework 6 and Spring Boot 3 are if you are using Kotlin, you have to go to the minimum version of the Kotlin 1.7 and above. Lombok, if you, are, you, you want to use a Lombok, someone was asking about the Lombok before. So suppose you are having JPA related project or something and you want to create the classes. You don't want to go with the record. You want to go with the classes and you want to use a Lombok annotation. So you have to uh, at least use a Lombok 1.18.22 then uh, for the JDK 17 support. And if you are using Gradle, then you have to at least use 7.3 and above. Okay. So these are the version requirements. Now. Uh, we have seen how to create our project, uh, how to use the new features provided by JDK and the Spring Boot 3. Now we will see some steps. Uh, we'll just go through the uh, steps to upgrade the application. So there is a SBM, Spring Boot Migrator, that can be helpful for migrating your Spring Boot 2.7 application to 3.0. And uh, if suppose you have the application 2.6, then it should go to 2.7. So there is a tip given on the Spring uh, tip side. If suppose you are having the Spring Boot uh, 2.6, then you should not directly jump from 2.6 to 3.0. You should go uh, step by step. First, you migrate your existing application from 2.6 to 2.7. 
then you go from 2.7 to 3.0 that is the proper way so these are the steps required for migrating your already existing application to the new version of the spring boot first thing you have to do is suppose you have the application already the spring boot uh, 2.7 or 2.6 first thing you have to do is you have to upgrade the java version then you have to upgrade the latest version of the spring 5 See, you are not directly jumping on the spring 6. First, you have to go to the latest version of the spring 5 and the latest version of the spring boot 2. Then you will do the upgrade to the spring 6 and spring boot 3. You are not directly jumping on the spring 6 and spring boot 3. Hmm? You have to take the middle step if you are uh, lacking, lagging one version. Okay. So, after changing the spring and spring version you have to in your project you have to fix your import statements wherever you have java x you have to replace it with the jakarta after doing that you have to do the api specific changes and after that you have to change the default changes in the, you have to take care of the changes in the default behavior i have narrated these all steps in the next slides and after doing all these things, you have to check in your project. Are you using any deprecated libraries? If you are using any deprecated libraries, you have to fix that also. Maybe by replacing that or removing that. So first step, we have already done this step. We have seen the demo, but we have seen the demo for creating the new application. For upgrading uh, the existing application, you have to download the JDK 17, the new version. Okay. And you have to change the uh, version for your uh, existing project to the with this Java 17 and all. So you have to make sure that you are running this all smoothly. After changing the version, you have to first cross check by running all the unit tests. Suppose you have written the test cases. So first step. You change the Java version and you check all the methods are running smoothly or not by running the test cases. Then uh, if the test cases is having some issues, then you have to go one by one solving the issues. So this is about the first, not jumping directly on the spring. Uh, uh, to migrate your application to the recent version of the Spring 5 and Spring Boot 3. So it will help you narrow down the breaking changes that will come with a major version of updates. Again, after changing this version, you have to run the application test. You know, you write the unit testing, application testing and all. So before first it, you have to run the you have to check the by uh, application is OK by running the unit test. And after changing this version to the uh, ne nearest version, latest version of the uh, Spring 5 and Spring Boot 2, you have to check by running the application test. If it is running smoothly or giving some issues, then you, if it is giving issue, one by one, you have to solve the issue. So at this step, uh, make sure that you get rid of all deprecated classes. So in this step only, you will get some errors. If uh, suppose uh, you have moved to the, let's say, from uh, Spring Boot 2.6 to 2.7. So if something is deprecated methods or property that will high get highlighted by giving error or something, you have to work on that. Okay, either uh, you have to search online, like for this thing, what is a new thing available in the uh, required version of Spring. Then you will go to the final upgrade to the Spring 6 and Spring Boot 3. Again, this is changing the may, uh, version of the Spring Boot. It may require the changes in the code. So application code, it may require the changes in the import statements. It may require the changes in the bean initialization. It, Spring Boot 3, as we know, depends on the Jakarta EE9. So you have to replace Wherever you are using Sowlet uh, and all, whatever is coming from Javax, you have to replace that import with the Jakarta. Spring Boot 3 is using Sowlet 5.0. Again, the version change for the Sowlet. 
JPA 3.0. So if you are planning for Spring Boot 3, the servlet and JPA versions are also changing. <clears throat> so in Spring Boot 3 project, if you are having uh, the servlet of the older version or JP of the older version, it may give you issue. Okay, when you are using Spring Boot Starter, Spring Boot will resolve the correct version of the library for you. Okay, so if you have imported some libraries, then um, you have to look for the new artifacts that generally end with the Jakarta. After changing this, you have to fix the import. It is the same step. You will replace, you will rename all the JAVAX with the Jakarta. Then uh, step by step, I have given that all the classes and interfaces, wherever you have used, you will replace that with the Jakarta. If suppose you are using JAVAX.Persistence, then you will make it Jakarta.Persistence. Okay. If uh, you are using Hibernate, uh, then uh, Minimum Hibernate ORM version required for Spring Boot 3 is 5.6.x. Okay, then uh, Spring Boot will use Hibernate 6. See, validator it was having. So, for everything, the version changes are required. For Hibernate validator was the requirement was 7. But for Hibernate, the 6 version. For ORM 5.6, for Flyway, uh, the version 9 is required to match with the Spring Boot 3. If you are developing your application with the Tomcat or JT, then or Undertow, you have to upgrade the, the, uh, this Tomcat or JT as for the minimum version requirement uh, for the Jakarta EE. So if the Jakarta EE9 is requiring the Tomcat 10 version, you have to change the Tomcat 10. Okay. You need uh, to switch the javax.servlet to the jakarta.servlet. Now, after changing this, Next change is API specific changes. So web controller annotation changes. There are some new annotations like Spring MVC and Spring Web Flux. No longer detect the controller based on the type level like request mapping annotation. Now I had used that, but actually I, sh I, sh I should not use that for that my controller. Instead of uh, specifying a controller or rest controller, we, we must specify this controller or rest controller. Uh, rather than just writing request mapping. You have to upgrade your your Apache HTTP client to version 5. Then uh, to make the, if you want to use a REST template. If you have work on the REST template, microservices and all, you must be doing this. As a HTTP method is a class and no longer as the enum. Now this is a major change. If you have work on the REST controller, you must be knowing that we have used uh, HTTP method as a class. Uh, sorry, HTTP method as an enum. You know, HTTP method dot something. So it was uh, used before as an enum. But now after uh, the Spring Boot version 3, HTTP method is available as a class. So you need to uh, make changes if you are using already some enums from the HTTP method. You have to change that because now that is not uh, available as an enum. So you have to go and check how that class is uh, their HTTP method and how we can make changes in the code. You may also have to increase the version of the log4j2. So the latest uh, as of now, the like uh, on the 13th, uh, I guess this is September 2022, the log 4j latest version was 2.19.0. So whenever you are planning to switch your application at that time, if suppose you are using log 4j in your uh, application, you have to check for the latest version of the log 4j too. Yep. And you have to upgrade the version of the log 4j. Now the next, there, are, there will be small changes in the default behaviors. For example, uh, default format of the date and time. So if you are using log 4j, you know that in the log, uh, it is giving a standard time, but now that format can be changed. So you can use a log date format pattern environment variable, or so you can use a property to give the date format, logging dot pattern dot date format, and you can restore that to the previous default value. So previous value was this default value. Previous means now already we are using. 
but with uh, Spring Boot, uh, it will change the default for date format. If you want to get the previous format, you will use this property to give this format. Otherwise, you will get this ISO 8601 standard format. This is YYYY, MMDD, then THS, MM. So this format you will get. So this is a small change and you can reverse it back by using the this property and giving the required pattern in your uh, configuration file. And the last step is take out the deprecate, deprecated library. After doing all these changes in your existing application, you have to check out the support for the external libraries. Okay, either, you know, or you might be using some other things in your uh, uh, application. So as you have already moved your namespace to the Jakarta EE9, so all the other libraries you have to check according to the Jakarta EE9. So what is the requirement uh, for those libraries for Jakarta EE9? So you have to upgrade those libraries as per the Jakarta EE9. And Spring Boot 3 is now supports the REST Assured, ZRC, H2, uh, ACAT 3. So this was the, uh, these are the steps to migrate your already existing old application to the new framework. Okay, I hope these steps are clear. If someone is looking for the changes, then you have to uh, take care of these all steps. Yes. Is that clear? What changes we have to do in the already existing application? Now some more guidance on upgrading to the Spring Framework 6.0. So we will see what core container we will have what uh, will be there for the data access and transactions and what are the changes we have to do in the web application. So core container upgrades are like this. So in the JSR 3.3.0 base, add direct inject annotation you will find. In the jakarta.inject, you will get this new annotation, add direct inject. And uh, corresponding JSR 2.50 base annotations, like we are already using this, na? Uh, at the rate uh, post construct and pre, de pre destroy. Now these two annotations are come uh, will come from Jakarta dot annotation package. See these are the small small changes, core container changes. Like which annotation now will come from which package? For the time being, uh, Spring keeps detect detecting the JavaX equivalent for converting it to the pre compiled binary. So there are the container uh, performs basic bean property determination without Java dot bean dot introspection by default. Now before uh, this for uh, introspecting the property we were using Java dot beans dot introspector. Now the container the spring container will automatically do that. Uh, for full backward compatibility with the spring version 5.3.x. In case of the sophisticated uh, Java bin, specify the following content in the meta NF. So if suppose you want backward compatibility, means you have Spring, six, uh, Spring Framework 6 project, you have added that, but some of the code is there from the Spring Framework 5.3. So if you want uh, your Spring 6 projects should give support to the Spring uh, uh, 5.3 also, then in, in your project meta nf folder, you have to create the file spring.factories okay. and you have to use this java.beans.introspection, this property. org.springframeworkbeans.beaninfofactory is equal to org.springframeworkbeans.extendedbeaninfofactory. This property you have to write inside the factory uh, spring.factories file in the meta nf to get the backward compatibility with the spring 5.3 okay. so when you are staying in the 5.3 on the time and uh, you want to move ahead with the compatibility of the 6.0 style property so you will use this property in the same meta nf folder spring.factories file you will give this property bin info factory is equal to simple bin info factory when you will decide that uh, now you want to go to the 
2.01. Then other changes in the core container are listenable future has been deprecated in the favor of the completable future. Simple evaluation context disables array allocation now aligned with the regular constructor resolution. These are the small, small changes. But yes, if you have these concepts in your uh, previous project, then you have to see these changes. Now, these were the, uh, the what I discussed about is a core container uh, things. Now, the next uh, things are related to the data access and transaction. So how we were accessing the data and doing the transaction handling in the uh, older version of the Spring by using JavaX.persistence. So simply we will now use Jakarta.persistence, which is coming from Jakarta EE9. And for the Hibernate ORM, we will switch to the 5.6.x version. Okay. Then uh, we will migrate uh, this with some more changes like uh, uh, with, uh, like uh, if you are using Hibernate validator, Hibernate, and we have to check for every small thing which version is required to uh, match with the Jakarta EE9. The corresponding validator, Hibernate validator generation is 7.0 and uh, uh, you can upgrade it later. Suppose uh, after a one year, the minimum requirement for the Spring Boot is a Jakarta EE9. But suppose you are not using Jakarta EE9 and uh, that is minimum requirement. That means you can go above also, right? So suppose you are using the Spring 6 project, Spring Boot 3 project with Jakarta EE10. Then you have to check with the Jakarta EE10 or EE9 what are the requirement of the version of the Hibernate ORM, Hibernate validator. If it is EE10, then you will go for the Hibernate validator 8.0. Okay, if it is EE10, then for if you are using Eclipse link, you will go for the 4.0. So as per your Jakarta EE version, whether it is 9 or above, whichever is the version you are using for the Jakarta EE, as per that version, you have to check for the versions of the um, packages uh, which are required for data access and transaction like Hibernate and all. Now the web application. What are the changes required for web application? So when you are moving to Jakarta, you have to, you know, for running the web application, generally we use the server Tomcat, JT. So if it is a Tomcat, you go to the version 10, JT 11 under to 2.2.19. And this you already know that you have to switch to from uh, the namespace javax.servlet, you have to go to the jakarta.servlet. So if you are using Jakarta EE 10, when Tomcat 10 is not enough, then you have to go for the latest servers, Tomcat 10.1 and JT 12. So you have to every time match the other uh, third party or uh, some libraries, you have to match with the Jakarta's version. Okay, several outdated servlet based integrations has been dropped. For example, common file upload and tiles as well as a free uh, marker JSP support. So we recommend that the standard servlet multi-part resolver for multi-part file uploads and regular free marker template views if needed. Uh, general focus on the rest oriented web architecture. So you have to check what we will use instead of that. Then there are few more upgrades that uh, MVC, uh, Spring MVC and Spring Webflux is no longer detect the controller by request mapping. That means you have to compulsory use at the rate controller or at the rate con rest controller annotation. Okay, that is it given. HTTP method is a class. Now it is no longer enum. Okay, so, so if you are using public API, then suppose you have written this line enum of enum set of HTTP uh, method, then you have to change it. Okay. Then uh, if you are using Kotlin extension function, like to web test client dot response spec, 
spec body so now it will return the java body spec type so it is no longer uses the work around the type kotlin body spec if you are using spring 6 you have to use a kotlin uh, 1.6 which fix the bug that needed with the work work around again the next change is if you are using apache http client you have to use the version 5 and um, which is required for using the concept like a rest template in your project <coughs> and these are the reference links with this uh, i conclude my uh, webinar if any questions or queries uh, you are welcome Are any questions over there? You can ask in the chat. Hello. PDF file you have to like ask. Uh, Petali or uh, maybe this uh, webinar is going to post to as a YouTube uh, video. From that also you can take. Okay, uh, Chaitali has shared the feedback form. Uh, you can uh, please give the feedback. It will be uh, for me to know where, where I'm, whether I'm good or if I'm lacking somewhere. I uh, it will give me the room for improvement. Please uh, give the feedback form. Thank you, Sai.